Hello, my name is Zach Hayes, and I am the District Sales Manager for the Crosby Group covering Texas, and welcome to this edition of our Ask the Expert podcast series. The question is, how to determine if the working load limit of your rigging is adequate? When answering this question, you have to look at all the contributing factors. First, and most obviously, you need to determine the weight of the load. This can be very obvious when the object has it printed or stamped on it, or it can take some detective work. For example, you can use a bill of laden or engineer drawings if available. If those are not available, you can use math by measuring the dimensions, finding the volume of the object, and multiplying that by the known weight of the material it is made out of. Some drawbacks of this are, it is difficult with non-square objects to find the volume, and also objects made out of two or more materials can be hard to separate. The easiest and most accurate way to find the weight of an object would be to use a load monitoring device. Straight point makes load cells that are incredibly accurate at plus or minus 0.1% accuracy along with easy to use. Once you determine the weight of your load, you still have other factors to consider. The rigger must also include the weight of all that is supported, which could include chain, hooks, shackles, and other rigging hardware for each leg. The rigger must also determine where the center of gravity is located in order to ensure a stable load and also that all legs of the slink are sharing an equal portion of the load. If that is not possible, then the rigger must use the correct size rigging to accommodate the disproportionate load that the legs may be experiencing. The final step is estimating the additional force being applied to the rigging through the lifting process. This can be difficult to determine, but it is important to remember that the smoother you lift, the less dynamic force you're going to apply to your rigging, and remember, never shock load your rigging. With all of these factors to consider, we recommend that you always err on the side of caution when picking out the size of your rigging. I hope you found this information helpful. Thanks for joining us today, and we will see you next time on our Ask the Expert podcast.